So I've ditched the Model Y, I'm in this Mach-E, and this specific Mach-E costs $63,575 plus destination of $1,300, coming to a total MSRP of $64,875. Don't let that deter you though from the Mach-E, it starts at around $43,000. This just has the extended range 91 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. In comparison, the Model Y is around 77 to 82 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack. That alone is an $8,600 option. So without that, you're looking at about $54,975 for this 2023 premium rear wheel drive Mustang Mach-E. It also has Blue Cruise, and I'm gonna do a test showing how Blue Cruise compares to autopilot. We're gonna go up a road that I know is very bad for autopilot. It's Route 8 on the way to San Diego is terrible for autopilot. You get phantom braking all the time. So what I'm gonna do is take the two cars on that route and then I'll see how many stops or mistakes that the car makes on that route to see which is better. And we'll compare Blue Cruise. We'll do, that's probably gonna be a separate video, but I'm gonna talk just about the Mach-E specifically. I'll do a comparison video of the Mustang Mach-E to the Model Y. I'll do the Blue Cruise video, and then we're gonna do this video. We're just gonna review this. Let's talk about the Mach-E. And you know, the haters, the haters, you know, they're gonna be like, oh, typical Tesla car. I don't care if you buy a Tesla Mach-E, VW, I don't care what you buy. I don't care if you ride a horse and buggy. I don't care. Actually, I, I do care if you're a horse and buggy because you're just, you know, at that point, just walk. Stop, don't abuse the horse too. Don't, don't let the horse haul your fat ass around, you know? This Mach-E is gorgeous on the interior. Let's take a look at some of these interior features. One thing you see right away is you have this little display right here that gives you all the information that you want to see. I asked a question on Twitter. I said, what do you want to know about the Mach-E? And, and someone said this. So as far as having this display, it's nice because you know, you, you get your show what gear you're in. The L stands for low or like a lower gear. Then you have your miles per hour. You have your battery charge right here. And then it says ground speed. Now I don't know why it needed to specify that, but it did. Um, and then you get your range over here. So all good information. You'll also notice that we have Apple CarPlay and it looks gorgeous on this screen. It really, the native infotainment, so if we click here, this just, it's not bad. It just, uh, some about these icons doesn't look great to me, but again, that's, that's a looks thing. What matters is functionality. Now people have also criticized this being built into the screen here as far as volume. Again, not that big of a deal in my opinion. You have three settings for the AC on auto, which is a great feature. You have heated seats, which we don't need because it's 408 degrees outside. Additionally, you have this sketch pad here. Let's see, let's sketch something up, right? And then I love Jim, Jim, I, Jim Farley, right? We love Jim. I gotta say, I watched a Jim Farley interview recently and the guy, he has some hum humility. He's a funny guy. He actually reminds me like of Tommy Boy when he's trying to sell uh, Callahan brakes. Like he, he's a funny guy and him standardizing their cars in 2025 on, NA, on NACS plugs, which is what Teslas have, um, that's big and that will go down as like one of those massive decisions where GMC has already fallen in line with that as well for the adoption of EVs. So that was really cool of him. What I don't like uh, with a lot of these companies, these EV companies is they're like, we're the Tesla killer. It's like, no one's a Tesla killer, Tesla's the standard. And the fact that they see, hey, they have the best, most reliable charging network. If we wanna sell cars and let our customers have a great experience, we need a reliable charging network. So that was big of them to say, hey, how do we get into this charging network? And that's also good for Tesla because they're gonna uh, earn a ton of revenue from it. Here's all of these settings right here. Again, we know it has Apple CarPlay. Here's charging, tire pressure, trip energy. This shows you some basic statistics on uh, what's going on in the trip. It's nice that it shows what percentage of the battery is being used with all these different settings so you can adjust your driving if you want to. Additionally, if we go here, this is where a lot of the controls are. So here's the three different, what the? Here's the three different drive modes of the car. You have Whisper, so we're gonna, dri we're gonna drive real smooth. And then you have Engage, that's a balanced drive for everyday fun. 
and then unbridle, which is exhilarating drive, machine and road align as one. I'd hope the machine and road align. See, the, they have to say, because this is a Mustang, they have to say that the machine and road align because Mustangs miss the road or leave the road often. The other thing I recommend is one pedal driving. You need to turn on one pedal driving because unfortunately in the Mustang Mach-E, it's the brake to accelerator is not very smooth. If you've been in a Tesla before, it's seamless. The transition is beautiful. In this, it's not that great. One single pedal driving helps that, and that's how an EV should be driven uh, because it's the most efficient way to drive it. So that's a recommendation I would make. If you're test driving a Mach-E or you're driving a friend's Mach-E or you have a Mach-E, put it in single pedal driving. You can also do uh, the propulsion sound, turn that on, and then it'll make an acceleration sound. Um, and then there's some other various features here. Now, one feature that is very cool, and we do have driver assistance, we'll do, and you have all of these separate settings in here. You also have software updates. Automatic updates is currently turned on. It's new. So yeah, so then here's just some uh, updates, and then Ford Power Up 4.24 is what we're currently on. Automatic updates is good. Now, one very cool part about this car is the frunk, so let's look at it now. Okay, so it's just an automatic release. I thought maybe it was automatic, it is not. So let's take a look at the frunk. And the reason I wanna point this out, two reasons. One, I'm gonna show you how to close it. But two, we got ice and we got a drain plug. Look at that, how nice is that? So you can take this to a tailgate or something like that and have ice, you can have your beer in there but the driver won't be drinking, right? And then that drain plug, Works great, so it just drains right out of the bottom of the car, um, and I think that's just an excellent, well thought out feature. I think Ford's really thinking about uh, who their customers are in that sense, at tailgates and things like that. Very smart to have this up front, and the drain plug is perfect. Now, another thing, in order to close the frunk, bring it down like this, and you sit it there, just resting, and then you put your hands on either side and do like a snapshot. That's kind of how you close it. I was pressing it down before and I had some issues with it, but that's how you close the frunk appropriately. So now a little on the exterior of the car, we have vapor blue metallic as the color. It looks like a flat color from here. And then as you can see, there's some flake to the paint. It's a really cool color and Ford's done an excellent job at offering exciting colors on their cars, especially grabber blue, which is probably my favorite on the Mach-E GT. Really nice looking wheels wrapped in Michelin tires. They're 225, 55, and they're 19 inches. Just a really nice looking wheel. I don't know if this is OE specific. I'm pretty sure this is just a generic tire. Yeah. Um, again, you have some Mach-E badging right there. Piano black, gloss black right here. And then the whole roof line again is gloss black. So it's overall a very good looking car. One thing to get used to though is definitely the door <laughs> handles. Um, this is the best way to do it in my opinion. Three fingers here, thumb here, and then it pops right out. So that's how you do that. And then in the <laughs> rear, there's no door handle. So you're just pressing this button and then that releases. So uh, I, I don't know, I, I feel like door handles, everyone's overthinking them. I'm fine with just a regular door handle, but that's what it is in the Mach-E. As far as seating position goes, in the back, these seats are incredibly comfortable very comfortable. Um, you have your climate control right here. You just have this simple switch, USB-A, USB-C. That's all good. We have a car seat in the back here. So that's how that fits. And you still have pretty ample room for a passenger to be up front. So that's all good. These seats are so comfortable. Like I, I remember that because this isn't the first time I've driven a Mach-E. I've driven the GT. I've driven multiple. I have some decent experience with the car. Um, and I, that's what I remember is the, the quality and comfort on the interior is very good. Tweeter speaker back here. You have this B&O sound system back here, which is an upgrade. Um, and then you got some leather. And then you have this massive moonroof here. But uh, let's see what the wife thinks about it. Or press this button right here. Into the back we go. Baby's loaded in. Baby's loaded in. You still plenty of room to ride up front. Apple CarPlay is dialed in. Um, but I'm riding in the back because I got to keep the baby asleep. Also, we just ate at Olive Garden, and the guy, uh, I asked where the bathroom was, and he said, uh, men's is to the right, looked at my baby and said, the women's is to the left. 
I'm thinking, do you want me to just drop my 10 month old into the women's restroom? What's she gonna do in there? Girl, uh, we're baby proofed, we're in. I'll have all this linked in the description. Also, I have to ride back here to keep the baby awake, not asleep. You gotta stay on the sleep schedule, otherwise your life's miserable. I gotta say, it's great being back here um, out of the back of this. And it's also nice that the panoramic roof, it comes, starts back further, so you're not getting the glaring sun on your, on your forehead. Like right here, like right here on your forehead. Oh, Mitsubishi 3000 GT. In the Tesla, you're getting intense heat on your head right here, and that's why I find it imperative to have some type of sunshade, especially in a place like Arizona where it's extremely hot. If you're in places that have normal summers and not uh, an oven on low, then it's it's a much better experience. And you actually, but it is cool riding in the back seat. You actually you get to appreciate the panoramic view. Hey. Give me that. Give me that. Can I have the binky? Jamie had to put the windows down because we just have all had Olive Garden, and I. Uh, well, she hit the brakes because the brakes are jerky in this thing, and it forced me to almost shard. Uh, but I held it, and look, I'm trying to give you every aspect of this car. The brakes are a little jerky, and they almost made me shit my pants. So that's that's what it is. Apple CarPlay looks good as all get out. But what do you say? What do you say? It's just not, it's not quick enough for you? I said it's not very fun. Not very it's fun. It's fine. Like I want it, like the Tesla. Oh. That's fun, you know? Yeah. Sir. Oh. The Tesla's fun, this is not? Yeah, it's fine. It's so you're not, flooring it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not We're that quick. Going. Yeah. Zero it, to 60 in 12 minutes. Zero to 60 in 12 minutes, you heard it here first. I think it's very comfortable back here. It's ergonomic, it's not very quick, but they do make a fast model. Not everyone needs that, but they have ones that are fast. Oh. All right, all right. All right, now we're in sport mode. Give it a rip. Yeah, baby. Is that a fake sound in me? Yeah. <laughs> I need a red light now. Yeah, right, there uh, you go, got a red light. That looks cool, I'm red. I get it because of the horse thing. That's right, because this is a Mustang. It's a wild horse. I see what they did there. Look at that. It's a chirping tire. All right, all right, all right. He's up. Jesus. I was. You don't have to tell me that. I'm up there, cowgirl. Um, still nothing near the Tesla. No, it's, yeah, it's not as quick. But there are drive modes. There they are. That's how you change them. Honestly, it didn't feel that different. It just got louder. Yeah, you're kind of right. Yeah. Turn on, a, turn on a sound. It's a good insight. We just took that turn there, right? And we got a lot of torque and we're only rear wheel drive. You hear the wheels chirp like <sighs> grinding up a lot. Um, so I, I do notice that. This car isn't that quick. It has zero to 60 time of 6.1 seconds. This specific Mach-E is the slowest of all of them because it's rear wheel drive and because it has so much weight from that 91 kilowatt hour battery pack and that's usable battery pack. So the range on this is over 300 miles. I did a calculation the other day, looking at like 327 miles of range uh, with the way I was driving it. And I've done road trips in the Mach-E before and it delivers on its um, mileage. Whereas Tesla, it's harder to get their rated range. Like I'll say that as an owner, that's always one thing I've been like, what the hell? Like how, how am I supposed to get 300 miles out of this? There's no way. Now, if you run it beyond zero, you can get the rated range, but like that's no one's gonna want to comfortably do that. I don't know. That's a whole nother. Dis I've talked about that a lot. In the comfort in here, people have asked, well, how does you know how's the suspension and everything? Um, it's very, very smooth, and it's quiet, but it's heavy, and you can feel the weight that this thing carries. It's, I mean, it's really heavy. Like you, it. If I'm if I'm on single pedal driving right now, okay. Now if I'm gonna click that off, and I'm just gonna go into the mode where you just glide, this carries speed in a way that I've never felt a car carry speed. We're gonna go into engage mode, and it's funny the dash even changes in whisper mode. Here it is. The car just glides, and it doesn't lose speed because it weighs so much. Um, which it, that's interesting. I I don't know why the, you know in these other modes it has more regen. The software seems to be decent. What's not good on the car, the warranty's awful. Three years, 36,000 miles. 
um, and then the battery warranty is okay. Five years, 60,000 miles for the powertrain and five years, 60 roadside assistance, five year, 100,000 mile on the high voltage battery and components. So um, the the battery warranty, that, that stuff, the three year 36 is just, that's like gotta be the worst in the industry. Um, when you have competitors like Hyundai doing 10 years, 100,000 miles, um, and then Tesla's even four years, 50,000 miles. So four year, 50,000 miles, more of an industry standard. Uh, Hyundai, in order to gain more market share, they have the best. It just gives you more of an idea in, that, in terms of that. So the speed of the car, as far as it being slow, it's 6.1 seconds. I owned a Focus ST and the, the zero to 60 time on that was about six seconds. And that's a performance car. So, it's plenty of power. With EVs, zero to 60 time is just become... Cop doing an illegal U-turn? Hey, what am I gonna do, pull him over? And the other thing is, some people don't like uh, the single pedal driving. Some people don't like regenerative braking. So this whisper mode makes it feel like a normal car. You're using the brake, you have to get back on the gas, and that's, uh, that's fine. It has Amazon Alexa in here. That's about the last woman I want listening to all my words. I don't need Jeff. Jeff doesn't need to know all of my secrets, right folks? Put it back into one pedal driving in whisper mode. There we go. But overall, uh, the, the car is solid. We ditched the Model Y and, and you know, my big complaint and my thing with telling people, hey, buy a Tesla, buy a Tesla is you're spending a, a significant amount of money, most likely the second largest purchase in your life I want you to buy something that you're gonna have a good experience with. If you're buying right now one car, Rivian R1S, that's sick. If you're buying one car and you need to go road trips and everything, for a consistently good experience and not knowing anything about EVs, the Tesla charging network more valuable than the car itself. It's incredibly reliable. They're in good places. It's I've, I've been to 240 or 50, separate supercharger locations now. I've only had to wait 10 minutes twice to charge out of all of those times on those road trips. And I've never had an issue where I could not charge my car. Whether the temperature's really hot, I got caught in a snowstorm, I've been through it all and I've not had a single issue. And I've been to the Electrify America stations and they're just not as well kept because unfortunately, the way the funding was, these companies are not uh, rewarded for maintaining the stations and uptime, they're rewarded for installing them. And they don't have the right contracts in place with a lot of the local power companies in order to keep them up and running. So that's a problem. And Tesla has a proprietary network that Ford is now going to have access to 12,000 supercharger locations. So this is good because I like the Mach-E GT. I want to buy other EVs other than Tesla, but because of the ease of the supercharger network, that has kept a buyer like me away from it. And also, as a uh, YouTuber on EVs, I want my viewers to have the best experience possible. I want them to trust me. And the, electric, the charging network for these is not gonna lead to trust. So uh, now that is going to change in the coming years as they switch to NACS. Hopefully these cars will be given some type of retrofit so the value doesn't drop dramatically and you're able to, co to continue to use your Mach-E or whatever uh, if you have one. So, so I think that's all good because this is a solid fun car and people are brand loyal and they're gonna want their Fords and their, their electric Fords um, and they've done a nice job. You know, it, it's, it is similar to the Model Y but it also has a lot of familiar things that aren't the full, um, like, like Tesla's like a, it's a totally different experience. I think it's a great driving experience, but this drives more like a regular car. Has a start button, has a lot more familiar features um, within this display, and there's actually some, some decent granularity. I'd like to see more on how efficient the car is running. I'd like to see more granularity on your driving experience twisted into this infotainment system. So uh, overall driving this car, quiet, comfortable, um, good sound system. I like that it has different drive modes. I like that we can turn on and off propulsion sound and one pedal driving and auto hold. So it doesn't have any type of uh, built-in security system like Tesla has uh, the sentry mode. So things like that, Tesla still has the advantage. Overall, it's a, it's a solid package. If you wanna watch the Mustang Mach-E versus a Tesla Model Y, click this video right here. I think you'll enjoy it.